Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Infernal Night Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. I've been wanting to do an Infernal Night deck on the channel for a good while, just actually never got around to it. It was kind of overlooked when Toon Chaos came out, and this deck definitely does need some reprints because a good majority of the cards you need to build the deck are from the Toon Chaos set. It's a really awesome deck that focuses on sort of a similar play style to the Noble Knights, focusing on being able to use the many different equip spells we run in the deck to get Gain additional search effects and special summon and equip setup with our main go-to boss monster, Immortal Phoenix Gearfreed on the field, giving us negations and then just easy monster equips using the many different Infernoble Knight monsters. I'm definitely happy with the results of the deck and it's definitely a fun one to look into. If you are a fan of Noble Knights, it does have quite a similar play style, but more of a destruction, one that focuses on the fire attribute that's affiliated with many of the monsters in the deck. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the main deck monsters, we are running three copies of Immortal Phoenix Gearfreed. You can banish one equip spell from your field or graveyard to special summon this card from your hand. At the start of damage step, if this card's attacked, you can equip one face-up monster on the field to this card, maximum one, as an equip spell, and then it gives this card 500 attack. And when a monster effect is activated, quick effect, you can send one face-up equip card you control to the graveyard, negate the activation, and destroy it. So having an option to destroy with Gearfreed and, you know, negate a monster effect is always good, but just being able to take a monster on the field and equip it onto this card as well makes for a big powerhouse putting this card up to 3500 attack alone and just being able to special summon it by just sending an equip card makes it all the better since we do run a good majority of equip cards and have ways to search them out in this deck as well. I also run three copies of Infernoble Knight Renaud. If you control a Fire Warrior monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way, it treated as a tuner. You can only special summon Infernoble Knight Renaud once per turn this way. And if it's special summon, you can target one Fire Warrior monster or one of your equip spells that is banished in your graveyard except for Renaud and add it to your hand. So you have recycle power, easy special summon power just by controlling a Fire Warrior monster, giving it a tuner axis, which means you can use it with your Immortal Phoenix Gear Free to then easily go into cards like Baron to Fleur, having your level 9 monster be your Immortal Phoenix Gearfreed, and then the level 1, which will be treated as a Tuner Renaud. I also run three Infernoble Knight Oliver with this card. While this card is an equip card, your opponent cannot target the equipped monsters with card effects. You can only use each of the following effects of Oliver once per turn. You can send one fire monster or one equip spell from your hand or face on the field of the graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand as a level one monster. If this card's in the graveyard, you can target one warrior monster you control. Equip this card to it as that monster. So being able to equip it onto your Immortal Phoenix Gear Free just gives you another monster to have as a negation for this card. But being a level four tuner means that you can set up some of your um, you know synchro plays with it as well for some of the higher ones being a level five play that you can use with cards like Renaud and this card to then summon out cards like Captain Oliver which have some destruction plays in the extra deck as well for you to use. And I also run two copies of Infernoble Knight and Malgus. I like this card because it's a level four non-tuner option to run as well. And while it's an equip card, the monster cannot be destroyed by battle. So you have card effect protection with Oliver and then battle protection with Malgus. And you can only use each of the following effects of Malgus once per turn. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle it into the deck three of your other fire warrior monsters and or noble arm cards that are banished or in your graveyard to draw one card. And if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one warrior monster you control and equip it to that monster. And having more equip power, just like the many other Infernoble Knight monsters we run, but being able to recycle your Infernoble Arms and your Warriors back into the deck for a draw means that you can keep the plays going consistently as well, having that shuffle back power as long as it's something else aside from Malgus. That's why I like running two, so you also have at least two options to do this throughout the deck for the recycle. And then for the one ofs in the deck, I run one Infernoble Knight Roland, having more of a quick play setup in the deck to equip on to one of your monsters. And if it's sent to the graveyard because it was sent there, you can add one Fire Warrior monster except for Roland or an equip spell from your deck to your hand. And it also works pretty well with one of the Horn of the Elephant, being able to destroy a Roland you control to special summon more monsters on your field using that trap. I also run one Infernoble Knight Ogier with this card. The equipped monster cannot be destroyed by card effects while equipped onto it. You can only use each of the following effects. You can send one Arms or Fire Warrior Monster, except for Ogier, from your deck to the graveyard. If it's in the graveyard, you can target a Warrior Monster and equip it onto it. Having graveyard set up with this card as well, with the last one being Infernal Knight Astolfo, you can banish one Fire Warrior Monster from your hand or graveyard, special summon this card from your hand. Then you can make this card's level become the level of the banished monsters. For more setup, because we do have some pretty high synchro monsters that we want to get into with this deck as well. And during the second semi phase after this activation, you can special summon that banished monster back onto the field. For more of a generic Fire Attribute 
attribute monster. I also run three copies of Fire Flint Lady. If you control a warrior monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can send this card from the field to the graveyard, special summon one level four lower warrior monster from your hand. If you do, your opponent cannot target it with card effects. This is just an easier way to special summon out Fire Flint Lady and then get one of your level four lower ones onto the field much more quickly for you to use just for another extra deck play. And then I also run one Jet Synchron. I'm a big fan of this card in the deck, just so you have the option to recycle a Fire Attribute monster back onto the field by also potentially sending other Infernal Knights from your hand to the graveyard to special summon it, but then having this monster in the field uh, back onto the field to then equip onto your bigger monster you may have also. With the last of the main deck monsters just being three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Hand Trap of choice in the deck, just being able to stop my opponent's graveyard setup or any searches they may try to add to their hand. And that is it for the main deck. We'll now, for the main deck monsters, we'll now move on to the spells. I run three copies of Infernoble Arms Durndal. While this card is equipped to a monster, you can add one level five or lower fire warrior monster from your deck to your hand, then destroy this card. If this card is sent to the graveyard because of the equipped monster sent to the graveyard, you can target one level fire or lower warrior monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So you either have a special summon option or the search power with Durndal for its destruction, of course, but still very, very useful and just another equip spell option to use in the deck. I also run run two copies of Inferno Arms Joy Use. While this card is equipped to a monster, you can target a Fire Warrior monster in your graveyard, add to your hand, and then destroy this card. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Fire Warrior monster from your hand. So I only run two because it's not as searchable and usable as Durndal, but still good for this specific setup, whether it be for the graveyard or the hand special summon. With the last of the Inferno Arm equip spells being two copies of Inferno Arms Hot Declare. When it's equipped to a monster, you can target one face a monster you control this turn. You cannot declare attacks except for with that monster, and he gains the ability this turn to make a second attack during each battle phase, then destroy this card. So equipped onto your Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed or one of your Synchro Extra Deck monsters, it can be a big powerhouse just for how much damage you can do against your opponent using this card. For some of the other generic equip spells I run, I also run one Divine Sword Phoenix Blade for the recycle for banishing warriors from the graveyard back to your hand, one Living Fossil for the special summon from the graveyard, and one Different Dimension Reincarnation for getting back our banished monsters we may have, especially when we use them with cards like the Infernoble Knight Astolfo to banish and then special summon back or just a quicker way to get those banished cards also. And then for the generic spells, I run one Call by the Grave for stopping our opponent's graveyard setup or search or any other hand traps. One Reinforcements of the Army for any of the Warrior Level 4 lower monsters we run to search them out. And one One for One. We do run a good majority of Level 1 monsters. So just being able to search and, you know, set up those cards with this while still being able to set up some of our Warriors in the Graveyard to then either equip onto the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed makes it a very useful Special Summon card in the deck for more than just the Level 1 option, but for the Graveyard setup. And that is it for the spells. Moving on now to the traps. I run three copies of Horn of Oliphant. You can banish one equipped card you control or in your graveyard, destroy one card on the field, or you can destroy one Roland and then special summon in defense up to three Fire Warrior monsters from your deck whose total levels equal nine, but their effects are negated. Also until the end of this turn after this effect, you cannot special summon except for Warrior monsters. It doesn't really shut you down at all because at least getting those monsters on the field is more set up for you to use. And if not, and you don't have Roland on the field, you can at least just have a banish of any equip a spell you control in your graveyard to destroy a card on the field. With the last of the main deck traps being three infinite permanents, just a really good backup with the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring to have enough hand traps to use in the deck while not taking up too much of the Infernal Blight engine, which you use to basically just have the equip spell set up. And with your Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, along with your hand traps, you have a monster effect negation on the field along with your impermanence and your search stop of your Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. But that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck. I run one copy of Infernoble Knight Captain Oliver and one copy of Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles. You have a level five and a level nine monster to set up on the field for your many different synchro plays, having destruction with the attacks of each one, and also just being able to have more of a setup and equip with Captain Oliver, but also being able to make use of the equip spells that you use, being able to equip fire monsters from your deck to this card as an equip spell and giving it 500 attack means you have more of a destruction step, even 
equipment during the damage step to destroy a card, if an equipped card becomes equipped to this card, as a use for Charles. I find you only need one of each, that's why I just have that, and use more of a generic lineup for the rest of the synchros, running one Power Tool Dragon for the equip spell search. Power Tool Braver Dragon definitely does help, being able to equip the Infernoble cards onto it and then just destroy them to gain additional search effects based off of which ones you equip. One Cupid Pitch for the level adjustment as well as one Herald of the Arclight for the negation uh, and also just the ease of being able to summon out a level 4 synchro monster. And for some of the bigger boss monster synchros I run one Black Rose Dragon, one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one Borolode Savage Dragon along with one Baron de Fleur for the bigger boss monster like I said Renaud and Immortal Phoenix Gearford can easily make this card. For the Link Monsters, I run two copies of a Soul, two Tales of the Noble Knight. You have so many equip spells in this deck that you can just send off to get a special summon off of a Soul, and just being able to search a warrior monster, even if you just search roll in your hand, you can't activate the effect this turn, but you have a quick play warrior monster to then equip onto your own monster during the following turn. And then for the rest of the Link Monsters, one Nightmare Phoenix for the Fire Attribute, but still Spell and Trap Destruction also. One Link Karibo for all the level 1 monsters that we run in the deck. And also just one Salmon Great Almirage, being able to set up another one in the graveyard to then just re-equip. And just needing a normal summon monster with 1,000 or less attack can easily be done with a good majority of the many different Infernoble Knight monsters we run in the deck all together. As for some of the go-to plays, like I said, Immortal Phoenix Gearfried will definitely be a big part of a lot of the different plays that you want to try out in the deck. Just being able to send an equip spell. So if you have just these three cards in your hand, if it's Renaud, the equip spell, and then that, you have all of this to use. And then also the play, if it's Special Summon, you can target one of your Fire Warrior Monsters or your equip spells that is banished in your graveyard, except for Renaud and add to your hand. So if you send the equip spell to Special Summon Gearfried, and then Special Summon out your Renaud, since you just control a fire warrior monster you can target your fire warrior or the equip spell as banished in your graveyard adding it back to your hand getting this card back in your hand for you to reuse that can be then equipped onto the warrior of choice and with that you also have the play to attack with gear freed and then equip on the renaud on the gear free having that monster in negation and then the additional equip spell that you can have onto it hitting for 3500 attack and then depending on which you know card was also equipped onto it an additional attack boost as well or you can go for the other play having the two monsters set up on the field going for the level 10 synchro being able to then go into your baron de fleur having a destruction and also a uh, negation on the field thanks to this card but also being able to target a level nine or lower monster in your graveyard return to the extra deck and special summon it means you can return baron de fleur and then the following turn special summon out your immortal phoenix gear freed if you have the monsters to equip onto it from your graveyard all the better as well because then you also just have that monster negation on top of the one that you may have already used thanks to your baron de fleur the following turn. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed it. Like I said, it's an awesome deck. I'm glad I was able to finally get around to doing a deck profile update to it. Hopefully we'll get some reprints for it in the near future as well. But as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and Kira Twig out.